Alright guys, welcome back to the chat and today what we're going to talk about is of course Ulster Rugby. We've done Munster, we've done Leinster, we've talked about how they're going to do, who their upcoming players are, who might have a bad season and you know, uh, we're going to do the exact same here with Ulster despite those videos not being too successful so you know, we'll just be sad and speak to ourselves. But, Ulster Rugby, very strong club, first Irish team to win the Heineken Cup but they have not got a lot of silverware since and this year might not look any different to me for me a good season to these guys is finishing in the top eight which is what you have to do in the united rugby championship so if we just go over to here in the lovely table this is what we actually have to deal with and you finish in the top eight that's where you get into the knockout rounds the other issue where you finish in the top four is european qualifiers and then each of the top four in your individual shields gets european rugby that's a different issue altogether we're just going to talk about the you know your rugby championship but you can see obviously they're in a very difficult shield they'll have to play each of these guys home and away and then they get to play every other team once but their team is strong enough to be able to handle that amount of pressure and even through international breaks unfortunately for some of their players but not a lot of their team will be taken away through Irish duty at least not at the minute but I think that could change fairly rapidly but Munster Rugby and Leicester Rugby seem to be the two stronger of the provinces. If we are to talk in just the senior team at the minute of course their strongest part for me is their back three. They have Balakoon, they have Michael Lowry, they have Jacob Stockdale, they have Addison who can cover there uh, if he remains fit and please God he does. He's, he is a very very classy player in 13 fullback wherever you want to put him once fit but he has an awful history of injuries which is you know very unfortunate. But the back three in Ulster even with Deft because you've got Craig Gilroy as well and is the, probably the strongest point and I'm especially excited about this guy Robert Balakoon here who you can see on the screen next to Billy Burns but he looked fantastic in that one international cap that he has hopefully he'll be able to get a couple more under the belt with Jacob Stockdale's dip in form which hopefully for Ulster that he corrects that dip in form like all of the Irish provinces he is very, they have a very strong first team but it's their depth which may lead to an issue and one position in particular which I think they're very shallow in depth and talent is actually out half now they've previously lost young players like Johnny McPhillips they had Bill Johnston on board I don't know if he's actually still there but he didn't perform to expectations although when he was younger I actually did a video years and years ago thinking he was going to be one of our next uh, big stars in Irish rugby and he was tailored that but injuries just completely ruined him and he could never get a starting berth in any team but at the moment we have Billy Burns and we have Ian Madigan from what I can see and this guy Angus Curtis is down here and he's only had 14 appearances so I'm not too familiar with how good Angus Curtis is maybe some Ulster rugby fans can actually get involved and let me know down in the comments below who a next you know superstar 10 for you coming up is but that seems to be a bit of a dodgy position and Billy Burns is likely to go on international duty due to starting a lot and Farrell seems to like him despite you know a couple of errors but he's a very very good attacking 10 brings the ball to the line just maybe not to the international standard yet but at pro 14 uh united rugby championship level he is pretty good so they should be okay in starting turns but as soon as international breaks come along i'd be worried about madigan due to age profile a very good player back in his day but uh, he's very sharply on a decline now and i'd rather he wouldn't be starting for my team if i was an ulster supporter i would hope there would be something else john coney yeah, john john cooney can fill in there but he is your best nine at the moment who is he's your superstar nine if you have had young players or your coach you would make them watch John Cooney because his support lines are absolutely fantastic you can see 84 appearances 724 points for John here 11 international cast which is an absolute farce to be honest with you he should have a lot more especially when Murray was having that down period Luke McGrath even as a Leinster supporter myself he should not be getting ahead of John Cooney back in the time but his face just didn't fit I don't know if he didn't fit into the tactics if he didn't get on with the coaches what it was age profile going against him but he just didn't make more international appearances but he at an Ulster level is an absolute superstar takes the kicks very good very good head on the shoulders and he is young in terms of the amount of rugby in the legs because he didn't get a lot of starts in Leinster in Connacht he was behind Kieran Marmion and then in Ulster he finally got to be the superstar and we can't talk about the senior team without obviously the most recent uh, signing that actually happened it only happened the other day for me uh, I don't know when you're watching this and it's obviously going to be common knowledge by now but Dwayne Vermeulen's actually made it to the Ulster team which I am as shocked as anyone that kind of came out of nowhere there wasn't even any rumours about it but he's left a fellow URC side in was it the Stormers and now he's gone off and 
chose Ulster to play with playing up north might be a money thing but it's now a local rival in the same league so that's going to be a very interesting move and it's all because they of their recently lost international players can't remember their name off the top of my head now but they lost some very very good South African players recently and they were looking to always replace and their back row is fairly light but although fairly light fairly very good since they're not Irish first choices you have Jordy Murphy you have Sean Reedy there who's very good you now have Dwayne Vermeulen and you have Nick Timoney who's an absolute star I think he's a very fantastic very a utility man as he called his speed is absolutely amazing which is very handy in a seven as we're floating around this sort of area the first team Ian Henderson and James Hume a centre and a, a lock respectively Ian Henderson obviously your captain very good player we're hoping for another standard season from him especially from an Irish perspective he could be one of Ireland leading lights if he can just keep that aggression up it always felt to me that he was never a very aggressive player despite being the size he is his, if he isn't on his game he seems to let the tackle soak him and not run tackles as hard as what he could but he is obviously able to step it up a notch and the recent seasons that he's had have been some of his best so hopefully he can continue that trajectory and James Hume last year hopefully this year can be his you know continuing of a breakout season Season in a 13 uh, we really needed an Ireland nice bit of depth in the centres of course uh, to another lovely centre to have and maybe not get caps but last season he really stood out from the crowd hopefully he can continue it this season with an uninterrupted uh, stupid hit season that's going to split up in the middle hopefully it just stays flowing as what is planned and Hume can really make a name for himself for an Irish 13 jersey and then of course little Michael Lowry down here who I love to bits but his size might do something against him in international rugby in terms of the eyes of the coaches for me he was probably one of our leading choices for the fullback jersey until Hugo Keenan stood up and took it those are kind of all the senior players on to it those are the superstars you have and then of course you have obviously you know your Luke Marshalls Rob Little Stuart McCluskey uh, Jack McGrath going in front of him Marty Moore is a very solid player uh, who else we got here Eric O'Sullivan Tom O'Toole recently getting international call-ups as well so it's a very very solid team and I don't think it'll get ripped apart by international call-ups like a Leinster or a Munster will so for a superstar coming up I'm sure if you're an Ulster fan you already know about him if you are not an Ulster fan really you got to look this guy up Nathan Doak he has been fantastic for the Ireland under 20s I, he is was well, looking like a 50 cap international maybe he is going to rival Craig Casey for the international jersey over the next year maybe not this season maybe next season come to Six Nations he might come in on one of those development player spots much like what Ryan Baird did previously James Ryan has done previously you know they're very popular but like and Robert Balakoon did and recently graduated from that so maybe we'll see Nathan Doak in one of those hopefully he gets games for other Ulster this season maybe if when those outhouse are gone you get uh, John Cooney standing out in 10 and then Nathan Doak can come in at 9 now this is going over the head of Shanahan I think his name is uh, but Nathan Doak is just a different level also takes kicks so very much in the John Cooney mould but slightly bigger I think from memory so you got 1.85 there and Cooney's there 1.785 kilo 87 kilos so they're roughly the same size but Nathan Doak is a bit taller Nathan Doak is actually the same height as me so it is looking good for Ulster Rugby in that aspect and another two players who I'd like to keep a look at one of them has been on everyone's radar for a while due to sevens Aaron Sexton previous sprinter ridiculously fast man uh, hopefully the rugby brain can just follow because it seems like he he just relied all on pace we need to see him running more clever lines but he's learning from Jacob Stockdale and Craig Gilroy not exactly shabby people to learn from I'm sure Andrew Trimble knocks around the odd time so he will hopefully learn how to you know run those solid support lines and of course I've already mentioned John Cooney there the master of a support line but more from the scrum half position but I'm sure he can pass on the knowledge to Aaron Sexton and then another guy who might not be as well known is Cormac Izuchukwu I've seen him play in the underages and there's been a little bit of talk about him but he looks a player 16 year appearances already only probably only in the last season but keep an eye out for him during the international periods where your Henderson's going to be gone uh, we might see this guy play a bit more games we should get to see him coming off the bench a bit more but he's still counted as the academy on the website I don't know how you know up to date these are whether they're going to be included in the final squads and all that crack I am not obviously part of the club but is a Chuk Chukwu looks a quality player so please look out for him he's going to be absolutely fabulous this year okay so that's a lot of positive points that's all good news for Ulster apparently but I will put out some negatives because you know 
there's going to be negatives to every team. It's one negative, of course, is in there a very difficult shield, which is the Irish Shield. We've got four very strong provinces in this country. We're very lucky to have that. Very well developed uh, rugby nation at the moment. Well funded and all that good stuff. So they're going to be playing six very difficult games. They're not going to have any sort of games where they can rest on their laurels and hopefully play a second string team and get the victory, maybe against Leinster when the internationals they're all gone and Leinster basically lost their first 15 and the same with Munster maybe the unlucky players from Munster who didn't get pick and re stand up and show why they should be on those international squads because I think a lot of these players are either knocking on the door for consistent caps or going for their first cap such as is a uh, if you're Nathan Doak is probably going to knock on the door Nick Timoney is going to knock on the door for a uh, more consistent period uh, er, Tom O'Toole, Eric O'Sullivan these guys are going to be wanting more consistent caps and calls up to the Irish squad so you might lose those players going throughout but in the grand scheme of things your team won't be as ripped apart as what Leinster's or Munster's will be unfortunately maybe that will change in the coming seasons and that one position on your team that is extremely light is out half you've got Billy Burns who as we've already talked about not held to the highest regard in terms of out halves in the country can make a bit of a mistake and Ian Madigan again old and I'm not seeing any young guys popping through so it, it is actually the weakest out half options of all the provinces because you've got Jack Carty coming in at Connacht and I know he's very unpredictable but he can have crackers of games and there's a chance Andy Farrow won't actually like the look of him due to his you know inconsistency and a bit of flair so he might stay at Connacht throughout the whole season and get it you know pick it up a bit there you know he had a bit of a poor season last year but he's still kind of having a world cup hangover and i make a lot of excuses for him because i think he's a fabulous player really like the way he plays rugby then of course you have leinster who just endless amount of talent you've got the burn brothers you've got you've got obviously johnny sexton but we've got a lot of tens there and then of course munster you have carberry uh, i think it's flannery crowley you have a lot of talent going on down there as well so ulster are at their lightest at out half and with losing johnny mcphillips over recent seasons and johnston even though he didn't tend to impress and you can move to cooney out there but not the end of the world due to the rest of your team being very very good and you've got Dwayne Vermeulen the enforcer to absolutely protect anyone who goes near anything and he you know he will out muscle everyone so you're absolutely fine so like I said this is what I would like this team to fight for the knockout rounds that you have to finish in the top eight of the table shouldn't be too too difficult for a team of this standard but obviously anything can happen in rugby international teams you know tear teams apart and all that good stuff you play in good form unfortunately you lose your best players for very important parts of the season uh hopefully Ulster can get around that if you enjoyed this video I will be doing Connacht next and then we'll be moving on to the other shields hopefully in quicker succession and uh, we're getting more used to this style of video now if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel comment down below what you think of Ulster's chances go check out Leinster and Munster one go check out the other videos on my channel most recently <laughs> there's one that's gone completely wrong where I said South Africa is going to beat the All Blacks and they've just lost to Australia twice so I'm going to have to make a video on that as well for how wrong you can be in predicting sports but you have to bite the bullet when you do these sort of things and hopefully you know you get some right I like to think I have a bit of rugby knowledge which is why I do these things and so comment down below what you think if you enjoy maybe graphic design ultimate team card like I've mentioned before I have an Instagram where I do those sort of ratings and stuff maybe you don't trust me now after that South Africa um, guess but follow me there anyway make me famous hopefully one day I can quit my job and do this full time God knows <laughs> absolute pipe dream but I hope you have a good weekend hope you had a good week and of course have a good one good luck <laughs>